Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at one of these. This is a British Telecom badged 9800X. Um, this is their logo that they had um, after 1992. I do also have um, another one of these which is labelled up with uh, their earlier logo. Uh, this is the British Telecom logo British Telecom used um, up until um, I think it was late 1991 so going forward 1992 they changed to this logo uh, and I think they used that for about 10 or 12 years and then they changed to something else but anyway um, today we're looking at 9800X specifically uh, these two um, I do have quite a few of these 9800Xs because uh, uh, they, they are quite um, quite uh, quite collectible um, the generic ones uh, look like this. This is just a generic 9800X. It's the same phone, just the badge is slightly different. Uh, and, and like I said, I must have probably about, I don't know, um, I'd say probably about 20, 20 plus uh, 9800Xs, all different flavors. Um, there is um, some for the SIP market, uh, some with LCD displays, um, and uh, various other permutations for, for different uh, cellular technologies. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at these two. Uh, these are the tax versions, or the e-tax, uh, as it's now called, enhanced tax. Uh, these operated on tax, though, because uh, these were released in 1989. Certainly the, the, this one um, is a 1990 model going by the serial number. Uh, this is a 1992 going by the serial number. Uh, they're identical phones, really, um, just that um, one's got a, a newer badge and one's got um, the older badge. So um, the phone's the same. I've gone through the menu like side by side and um, I've checked it out um, and uh, th they are the same. So let's uh, let's fire one of these up. We'll go with this one because I think it's got a decent battery. Um, now, uh, there are phones that do look like this, but actually aren't 9800Xs. Um, certainly the, uh, the DPC 950 looks like this. Uh, I'm going to try and do a video about that one uh, when I find it. Um, I do have one somewhere because uh, I got a record of it, um, but I only have one of them. So um, I will get around to doing a video because th that phone is probably the rarest Microtech I own. Um, I do also have a DPC 500 VIP, which is what this is. Um, this doesn't actually have any volume keys on the side, like the 9800X, um, and this is a cut-down version of this, basically. Um, it does have the same keypad, as you can clearly see, but some of the buttons are different. Um, you don't get an alphanumeric uh, phone book on this one. It's just got uh, the volume key, and uh, this really doesn't have much in the way of a menu structure, whereas this one does. Uh, the the uh, certainly the 9800X um, does have a menu. You can uh, navigate the menu by pressing the menu button, and obviously go in there and um, change what you need to do. Um, several different options, I guess. Um, so you got general, uh, and then to go in, you just press M plus, uh, and that gives you the options under that menu tree, really. Um, so whereas so so this phone does have a menu. This is a 9800X. Um, this is a DPC 500 VIP, um, and uh, th these are quite basic phones. But uh, certainly the VIP editions uh, of this 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 phone are very rare. Um, I actually um, only have a couple of these, um, and um, th 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 these are quite collectible as well. But we're not looking about this. I'll try and do a video about this as well. Because uh, this is somewhat different to uh, the 9800X. Certainly the screen is different. So don't confuse one of these with a 9800X. Um, but anyway. So um, looking at the 9800X then. Um, it's got a whole bunch of, uh, of what they said at the time were state-of-the-art features. Of course, going by today's standards, uh, the features are um, quite farcical really if you think about it. Um, that there's not much in the menu that, uh, that that nowadays you would you would think was was out of this world. Um, so uh, you got call screen uh, on number two, um, delayed call, uh, a couple of other options. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, not that there's too many. It's just that the menu on the 9800X is a bit sluggish. 
Um, I got, I got, like I said, a whole bunch of 900 X's. Uh, the, the menu on the Italian ones is even more sluggish than this. Uh, believe it or not, it's, it's, it's a real nuisance to actually navigate through. So, um, but this one is sluggish, but it's not as sluggish as the other one. So, um, let's quickly do memory recall, see what that brings up. So that would be the number 08507245161. Um, so that's obviously someone's number. Um, what's important to note with the 9800Xs is that um, it's got um, the certainly the LED display versions. There, there are some super, super rare um, 9800Xs that were made for the Norwegian markets, so Scandinavia. Um, there were also some for Austria and Italy uh, that, that had LCD versions. Those ones are by far the, the rarest variant of the 9800X. Uh, this is an E-Tax or a Tax uh, variant of the 9800X. Um, it's it's not common, but it's it's not the rarest variant of this phone. So, um, but the the the, the most 9800Xs um, have the 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 eight segment uh, eight 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 digit rather um, LED dot matrix display. That's important to note. Um, there's, there's, um, if, if you punch in eight digits, it will display eight digits. If you had a look at the alpha video that I did a couple of months back, um, and in fact, um, pretty much any other microtag, um, that single line, um, it will only display you seven digits. Uh, no other microtag that single line will display you, um, eight digits of, um, of numbers. Um, obviously it's things like the elite or the elite or the digital elite. Um, that have got a dual line dot matrix display, they'll obviously be able to display more, um, but they still only have seven digits on one line. Um, so worth, worth making a note. Um, certainly, if you come across a, a, an old phone like this um, with a with a with an elongated a antenna base and uh, a keypad that's all flush, um, certainly the the nine eight hundred X, this type of phone. That the keypads, uh, the, the the keypad is quite is quite something else because uh, no other Microtac has this sort of keypad. It, it's it's um it's it's one big um, sheet of rubber really. Um, there's no individual buttons. The uh, the buttons obviously um, pressed down, but it it, it ain't individual buttons um, with with a, a plastic uh, a, 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 like a, a hard plastic sort of cover. Uh, th this is one sheet of rubber that covers all the the little sensors for the buttons. So. Um, quite quite something else uh, in terms of microtag. So I guess they uh, they made these um, so that uh, you can possibly spill a bit of moisture on that, and it wouldn't affect uh, wouldn't affect the phone. Certainly, uh, more modern microtags um, they they don't have this um, the, this sort of um, this sort of keypad, and the more modern microtags also don't have the elongated um, antenna. Um, of course, like I always say, with the um, with the with the with a long pull-out microtac antennas, which is uh, what this is, even the the, the UFO antennas, um, what I call the UFO antennas, which is the the, the flat top bit here, um, e even those ones, this is just a bit of plastic. The the, the real antenna is actually in here. Um, I'm going to show you. Well, I'll try and show you this real quick. Hopefully, not damaging this phone. Um, you'll see that pretty much. All the microtags have this sort of thing. There's a, a little bit of red, and, and, and basically, I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's a gold little wire coil. That is basically your antenna. Um, that plugs into a little socket down here, and, and this is your antenna, basically. Um, the bit of plastic that pulls out really has no function. Um, the, the only exception to, to the rule is um, the microtags that have um, the shorter antennas. So the, the GSM versions, some of the GSM versions um, have, have shorter antennas, um, like for example, the um, 8600, 8700, the 8800, and I think the 8900. Um, and I'll show you what I mean quickly. Um, this is a, an MR601, which is a, an 8900 basically. Um, these antennas do actually have metal in. Um, I pulled this one out um, because the rubber on it is going a little bit and I don't know if you can just about see the gold in in there I don't know if this will zoom zoom right in but you can just about see the gold coil in there so the the, the short antenna microtax um, do actually 
have some function um, uh, in, 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 in sort of receiving a, a service or a signal. The, uh, the, the longer microtac antennas like this and, and like pretty much all the analog microtacs, your alphas, your, your lights, your digital lights, um, they, they, they all have this sort of long antenna and, 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 and this is just plastic. This is a joke really. So um, worth noting anyway. So um, if, if you're a guy like me who's been collecting for ages and he's got a, a few of these, um, it, it's always nice to have the different branding for, for different uh, from different companies. Um, obviously, th these are black. Um, British Telecom did also do um, these phones here. I've got a few of these. Um, this is a, a DPC 500. Uh, this is the British Telecom version. It's got the same keypad, the same sort of rubbery feel, same sort of flush with the thing. But uh, these ones didn't have any uh, any letters on them because obviously they didn't have an alpha uh, alpha numeric uh, phone book. They just had uh, the, the the volume key uh, and and uh, and uh, the up arrow, which is just a function, a basic function. So you'd hit that, um, and uh, you, you'd um, do I don't know, was two battery meter or something maybe or five was maybe mute or i'm not too sure but but certainly that was it you just press that and a, and, a, and a button and that would activate or disactivate that function there was no menu or anything on these these are these are you know real basic so no volume keys on the side obviously so th this is not to be confused with obviously one of these this is a, a much more advanced phone uh, but even though these ones came out later these ones came out um probably um 1990 1991 uh, the DPC 500 came out. Certainly, uh, going by the serial number of this, uh, this one I think is dated 91. Uh, so, um, certainly worth making a note of. Uh, the British Telecom had a, a few different models. So, um, th there is also um, the Motorola Personal Phone. This is a, another rebadge as a 9800X. Um, they did do the Motorola Personal in a in a in a grey colour exactly like this this is just a dpc uh 500 and they did the motor personal phone as a dpc 500 as well uh this is the vip edition of that phone i will do another video about that one uh, when i dig out the gray colored uh, motorola personal phone that i have i've got a couple of them somewhere they're in storage when i get the chance i'll try and find them and do a video about that so this is not to be confused obviously with your 9800x's or the generic ones that we have just here um, or in fact the dpc 500 hopefully you're not confused um certainly um it takes a, a someone someone uh, with, with quite a large collection and, and quite a bit of knowledge to sort of differentiate between the two uh the the dpc 950 also looks like a 9800x to the untrained eye there are a couple of subtle differences. I will try and do a video about that phone as well. Um, that's probably one of the rarest microtacs I own. Um, certainly, when I find it in, in storage, I will do a video. So, um, But that's pretty much all I have to say about the um, the um, the 9800X. It is legendary. Um, the, these phones, that certainly the 9800X came out um, in 1989. Um, this was the very first microtac they ever brought out. Uh, the the, the 9800X was the microtac, the, the, the very first one in all the microtacs they brought out. And I think they launched this back end of April 89, I think. Um, it, it was April or May 89. Um, it's definitely 89, 1989. Um, I'm not sure the month, um, but um, I will have to check that. I'm sure it's April, it might be May. Um, incidentally, um, most of the 9800s that you might find um, um, are probably badged up just with a generic Motorola um, and they have the, um, the, the blue lines um, which is obviously um, a, a sort of a, a design feature of the time and uh, they got a blue Microtac logo there um, so but um, it, it, most of the 9800Xs that you find uh, nowadays if you're lucky to find one that is because these are fairly rare phones will be um, 1990 models 90, or 1990 editions, 1991 editions. Um, it's very rare to get uh, a 1989 phone that was manufactured in 1989 because obviously they launched this in 1989. Um, so if you find a 1989 uh, phone going by the serial number, um, that'll be quite rare. Um, I do actually have a 1989 phone. I got a couple actually. Um, and this is um, this is not it. Um, I'm guessing. Hopefully, it's this one because I thought these were the 1989 ones. 
yeah so if you look at the serial number i don't know if y'all can see that it's got will this zoom hopefully it will 745 dps p is 89 um, so this is definitely an 89 one that was manufactured in 1989 um, and hopefully oh this does this battery doesn't have any juice okay let me put a good battery on then just to show you that this one really does work for a phone that's 26 years old um, it is definitely worth showing you like I said, you've got the lovely dark matrix, eight, seg eight digit LED display, um, which you can clearly see there. Uh, real nice, um, even though that the, these displays are battery eaters, I mean, they go through batteries like, the, like you know, like nothing. They, they, they suck up the power, you know, real bad. But at the time, um, I think, you know, most people were carrying around Dynatax, you know, Dynatax 8000s, uh, uh, S or X's or M's or, or any of the other permutations. Uh, there was a couple of other options. You know, you had an audio vox like this, and this is a sizable handset as well. Um, and, and phones, you know, that era were this sort of size. So when Motorola released a, a, a phone that was, uh, they, they marketed this as a phone that would fit in your shirt pocket. Uh, certainly um, with, with, a, with a fat antenna, I'm not too sure how that would work. Um, but um, they, they marketed it very very cleverly because they, they said this was the very first phone that would fit in your shirt pocket. I'm not so sure um, that would fit in my shirt pocket, but um, that's how they marketed it. And obviously, um, uh, they um, you know people given the choice would prefer this to buying a to, to, to carrying a, a, a dying attack of some sort. So um, th these obviously um, were very popular. Um, the price tag on something like this back in '89, um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't know exactly, but I would I would have a guess that this was probably um, in pound sterling, probably a couple of grand. Um, in today's money, that's probably like I don't know eight or nine grand. Given that you know back in '89, you could probably buy a car for like eight or nine grand in in in. In, in that kind of money in that era so these phones were very expensive uh certainly um i can remember paying a fortune for uh, for an elite uh in 1993 i think it was on 94 i bought i bought a, a, a motorola elite and that cost me just under a grand uh, so I, I would think these were a couple of grand when they launched these in 89 worth noting anyway um that's all pretty much I, I, I can say about these ones. Um, they did a, a whole schmuggers board of different variants, like I said earlier. Um, I do have some LC with LCD screens. I do have some with metallic badges. Um, I do have some for the SIP, for the Italian SIP networks. They operated on RTMS uh, 450, uh, so uh, completely different technology. Um, and uh, they did these for, uh, for JTAC as well, which is Japanese TAC. Um, I do actually have one. Um, I haven't found it yet, though, which is real annoying. Um, but the, 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 the one with the JTAC actually um, has all Japanese characters on, on the keypad and obviously on the display. And if you, if, you think about, if you think about that for a second, it might not mean much to you. But from an electronics point of view, that's quite an achievement uh, because um, Japanese ain't exactly, a, ain't exactly um, hard to... Uh, it's, it's not exactly easy to, to display on any sort of... Uh, any sort of display electronically so uh, certainly with the LED displays of the time that was quite an achievement um, and I will try and do a video of that one when I when I dig it out um, until then though y'all have got to make do with uh, just a generic one or the, uh, the two British telecom ones that are uh, that I got um, so but uh, thanks uh, for checking this video out um, I'm gonna try and do um, a, I don't know a, a DPC or a DPC 950 video when I find it um, it, it is somewhere I do I do definitely have one um, uh, alternatively um, I'll try and do a, a video about uh, one of these this is uh, the VIP edition of the DPC 500 um, amongst other things uh, if you like this video or the phones uh, don't forget to give me the thumbs up um, and um, um, share and subscribe if um, if you like the video thanks for watching